You are your way out. Live from AVX Studios in downtown Birmingham, The Ropes with TR3. I mean, that's average. You look at his, uh, his yards per attempt. That's below average. Enough to win. Enough to win. No mistakes. Passing touchdowns. Two interceptions. Zero. 34 rushing yards. That's the other thing, guys. Normally, he's rushing the ball. When he runs the ball for the game, he's over five yards a carry. 3.8. Well, was today. a couple kneel down, two kneel downs in there hurt his average. Fourth highest passer rating in franchise history in the postseason behind. How about this group? Rodney Pete, Nick Foles, and Tommy Thompson. Wow. He had a higher passer rating. Eclectic group. Higher passer rating tonight than Donovan McNabb, who's the greatest quarterback in Eagles history, ever had in a postseason game. You had another one about running backs and, and Kenny Gainwell. What was that one? Oh, the Eagles have had five running backs rush for 100 yards in a playoff game, and some great ones, and then a couple names that would surprise you. Steve Van Buren, Wilbert Montgomery, Brian Westbrook, Heath Sherman, and Kenny Gainwell. Never know. Mm-hmm. Kenny That's crazy. What, First Kenny career 100 yard game. Fifth what's Kenny pick? Gainwell's upside? <laughs> Listen, I think he's a talented I'm, kid. No, I'm asking. Ruben, and I, well, I'm asking. Ruben and I have talked about that. No, he's, he's really good. I mean, he was way underdrafted. I mean, to find him as a sixth round pick was surprising Fifth. based on his career. I mean, he was, a, he was a really productive college player. Don't know why he lasted so long, but he did. Good move by Howie to pick him. But, I mean, he's a guy that. If he were in an offense where he were a more featured back, where he had a bigger role, he would put up bigger numbers, but that's fine. I think he fits in. I think the Eagles have a very nice mix of running backs here. They all have different strengths. They all do different things well. Gainwell had a funny summer in that it looked like he, he was having trouble catching the ball, and he fumbled a couple times. Yeah. And I, I wondered what was up with him. But once he got into the regular season, he was fine. And then today, in his first taste of the postseason, really, uh, I mean, he, he played, he has a, this was his first 100-yard game. And he, he brings an awful lot to the offense. I mean, and one of the other things that, uh, that I was very pleased with today was Sanders looked healthier today than he had been for a while. You know, I thought yeah, Miles, the, the last, issue. I thought that Miles, he had, they, they were talking about this knee thing that he had. In the last month of the season, he wasn't hitting the hole quite the way he had before. Uh, but now, with the rest, uh, he came out tonight and he looked like the Miles Sanders of earlier in the season. So this team really is clicking on all cylinders right now. Yeah, you look at, uh, you, you look at Kenneth Gainwell. He's been a prolific guy in college, too. And, and when you look at him, both Pollard and Gibson. Tony he Pollard and Antonio Gibson from the Commanders. He started in front of those guys. That's how good he was in college. At and those are two starters right now in the league. And he started in front of both of those guys in college. He's gotten better at picking up the blitz. I mean, he's oh, yeah. a physical yeah. player. I'll tell you what, I don't get too far ahead of ourselves. Miles Sanders doesn't have a contract. Gainwell looked like a stud, you know. Stranger things have happened. I, you know, tonight reminded me of like the three-headed monster. Yes. Back in the day, uh, you know, with with I mean, Boston had a, had a touchdown, had some yards. Uh, when when you can attack with three different types of backs who have different skills and, and come at you differently, it's just really tough to stop. All right, let's go to uh, Jalen. He is the crown jewel of this franchise, Jalen Hurts. <laughs> and speaking of crown jewel, take a look at the jewels he's wearing too in the post game. Here we go, Jalen Hurts. Oh. Sir? How essential was it for this team the way you set the tone, the way you guys did that first half? Yeah, I think it was um, very important for us to come out and start fast. And um, I think as a football team, we just came out, we played a lot of energy. Um, we prepared really well throughout the week. And you always talk about, um, you know, challenging everybody to play their best ball, right? Because I, I truly never put a limit on myself, and I never put a limit on what this team can do. So there's always more out there for us to get um, and to come out there and, and play the way we did tonight. Um, I'm proud of this group. I'm proud of this team. I'm proud of the preparation that we put in to get um, to where we are. So a lot to be uh, grateful, grateful for, but um, it was earned um, during the week. So, um, you know, excited to have another opportunity to play for something big again. Jalen, how much, how much more coming into this game and completing it? Good enough. Good enough. Jalen, you guys, just a little bit of a strange question, but you guys have won so many coin tosses. You generally don't get the ball at the start of the game. Uh, today, you guys were able to do it and start so quickly. Does that allow you guys to get into that tempo a little bit easier? Yeah, I think regardless of the circumstance, you know, you just want to go out there and execute. Um, 
And I think that's what we did a really good job of. You know, that was a really good team, uh, really well coached, you know, and we, we, we saw the, the game that they played against us um, two weeks ago with their, you know, their starters not even playing. So that's a, it's a really well coached team. They have really good players. I think we, we, we did a really good job of executing. And, um, you know, we put, we put a good one together. That's on all phases, all three phases. So um, it's always great to start fast. Um, but it was, it was good. It was a good win. Did you think that your ability to hit that first long pass to Devontae just to say, hey, I can do this. We can make this happen. Yeah, it wasn't. Um, it was just, it just, just going throughout the game. Um, you know, there really wasn't any... Um, extra, you know, fuel to anything um, in terms of that. Um, I feel like you know, we know who we are. We know who we are and um, we just want to go out there and play our best ball. We want to execute and do our jobs. That's that's our single motivation. I um, ultimately playing for the man next to us. So, like I said, it's always good to kind of get that thing going early, but I think executing is the more, most important thing out of all of it. And uh, whether it's a uh, five-yard route or a deep shot, um, kind of sealing the block and capturing the edge, reaching the guy on the edge, um, we want to do our jobs. From a physical standpoint, Jalen, what was easier for you tonight compared to two weeks ago? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I think, I think just the, the mental approach of getting it done. You know, and, you know, we got it done. Seeing Wayne play through his injury, how much does that mean to you personally? Yeah, he's a warrior. He's a, he's a true warrior. And he's a um, very important piece of this team. And, you know, he's been doing great things for, for a very long time. And I'm, I'm very grateful to have him. We're, we're grateful to have him. And I'm happy he's kind of coming out of this thing clean. Jalen, the fact that you think that the, uh, the fact that you were able to uh, run up the side runs had on the effectiveness of the offense? Um... I mean, we, we all know um, that that adds an extra dynamic to um, what we can do. So I think that kind of answers itself. Jalen Dallas uh, said that you set the tone for the team by when you talk to them, talk about how, how hungry you are for this. Where did, where did that come from? <laughs> um, you know, you, you, you work really hard for these opportunities. You know, they, they, they come a dime a dozen sometimes. You work really hard for them, though. You know, and, you know, I'm, you know, just very eager. <clears throat> eager to continue to grow. Um, you know, eager to go through anything and everything with this group. Um, it's, a, it's a special thing. It's a special feeling. It's a, uh, a special type of togetherness that we have. And it's something that I, I don't think I've, I've experienced quite like this. Um, for sure on this on the NFL level. So we just want to continue to grow together, um, hold each other accountable and believe in one another. You know, I think um, I think we just came out hungry, you know, and um, that's what it was. How much do you think last year's game in Tampa and the playoffs helped you in this game? Um, I think every experience is, is helpful. I think... Um, not only that game, but I mean, the entire last season, um, the past 15 games I played, um, 15, um, I think all of those have been very beneficial, you know, and a lot, lot to learn from from that. You know, I want to come out here and just kind of play clean football and kind of knowing what that looks like, finding a way to do that. Um, it's, it's been good. Can you describe the atmosphere in Philly? What was it like on the field? You know, I... Um, you know, I go back to uh, the Monday night football game we had versus Minnesota, and that was an electric environment. And I think the one tonight, man, it was it was beautiful. You know, I always kind of measure it by how many fans are there for pregame warm-ups, and I think it was pretty thick. So it's exciting, you know what I'm saying? I, I didn't know they would take the Philly. It's a Philly thing and run with it, but um, it's, a, it's truly a Philly thing here. It's, a, it's truly a Philly thing, and um, the special type of support we have, the, the, the spirit and pride behind what we're doing, we just want to continue to do good things for the city. Can you even imagine what the atmosphere is going to be like next week in NFC title game, 60 minutes away from the Super Bowl? Yeah, I can't. I can't. Um, yeah, I, I can't. <laughs> I really can't.
Jalen, uh, you guys ran for 268 today. You, you've had games where you've thrown in for well over 300. Um, it seems like Shane just focuses in on what the defense is allowing and he sort of hammers it. Is that you get that sort of approach or do you come into this game? Yeah, I think, I think the most important thing is um, what's been good for us is we've been able to be effective in um, every, every possible way. And that's the most. I mean, that's, that's that's all you can ask for as a as an offense. Um, being able to efficiently run the ball, throw the ball efficiently, and um, quarterback can do do it as well. Um, that's a good thing to have, you know. And I think it, it's a special thing when we're able to do all of that. I think um, it's kind of like pick your poison. So, you know, when we're executing and we we have the right attention to detail and everything that we're doing. Um, you know, we, we, we definitely want to pose a threat on all these different areas uh, for a defense. And that's something we work at every day. That's 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 when you were saying when you were saying earlier that your running adds a dynamic to the offense, uh, I mean, obviously, did you kind of have to, like, take a hit on it today to kind of know that that would happen, that you'd be okay? To... Mentally, mentally, um, regardless of how I was feeling physically, and how I feel physically, mentally, I was already there. So there was nothing that needed to be done for me to get there. In terms of that what, type of, uh, what type of uh, tone setter was Dallas Goddard? Not only his uh, opening uh, touchdown, but a few plays before that, the stiff arm. It kind of felt like it was hurt across the stadium. Yeah, no, um, I think um, I think Dallas has been able to do great things this whole entire time. I think the phys physicality he plays with, how he came out there, and I mean, he does that all the time. I mean, he's trying to punish. He's trying to punish somebody. He's not trying to spare no man. Um, he's trying to apply pressure to him. So um, definitely, definitely uh, creates a lot of energy and enthusiasm. And then to make the one-headed catch with the left hand, the non-dominant hand, that's, <clears throat> that's pretty impressive, um, considering the ball was probably already in there. So you know, he's a big-time player. We need our big-time players to make big-time plays um, as we go down the stretch. I think, um, you know, I think, I think that, I think, yeah. I'm sorry. In, in terms of the star, in terms of the starving for this mentality that you've talked about, that you've passed on to your teammates, how much does that grow now that you're on to the next step? Yeah, I think, um, I think it's an eagerness. It's an eagerness to accomplish what we want to accomplish and you know that's a day by day thing um, you know every 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 team comes into this thing searching for uh, trying to accomplish the same thing now once you climb that mountain it gets harder it gets more treacherous as you as you get to the top but um, we take it day by day we just take it one step at a time one play at a time trusting the process of getting better every day and we let that handle itself I think um, you I, I, I love I love the fact that that's the mentality of this team. I love the fact that we're starving, that, that we're not just hungry for it, but we're starving for it. We're, we're starving for growth. We're eager for um, growth and getting better and learning from our mistakes. Um, I think that's the beautiful thing about it, and we just want to continue to do that, you know, and I think, um, you know, we, um, and I think there was a, a little motivation um, as a team just on, Want to come out here and play our best ball, you know. And I think sometimes you got to be careful what you wish for. Okay, thanks, bro. Thanks, Joe. Jalen Hurts, how about that chain, huh? Look at the chain that Nick Sirianni is wearing. I, I, I can't place it. Ray, what, what is that? Oh, that. Come on, Mike. That's the Meek Mill Dream Chaser chain. <laughs> what? What? Say what? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, you're giving me dream. you giving me dreams and nightmares, Ray. <laughs> Nick Sirianni in the locker room. Looks good on him. I'll, say that. That. I'll tell you, it looks good on you, though. <laughs> Wearing the Meek Mill Dream Chaser chain, and uh, maybe we can. What get am I here for? <laughs> From AVX Studios in downtown Birmingham, The Ropes with TR3.
He was a bad man. <laughs> I love it, man. Welcome in. Welcome in, man. Today with the ropes with TR3. I'm your host, Trent Richardson, and we do have a good show. We had a long weekend, had a great weekend. Um, a talented weekend, man. <laughs> hey, lots to unwrap. Yes, yeah, a lot to unwrap, man. Um, but this is just show where you, you know, we share a lot of knowledge and we have a lot of fun while doing it. Um, but man, you know, it, it's we're gonna jump off with, with we're gonna jump off with them Eagles, man. We're gonna jump off with them Eagles, man. <laughs> we're gonna jump off with them Eagles, man. Was there any doubt that with Jalen coming back that you know they weren't gonna be on top? No, I didn't have no doubt. Um. I mean, he played strong in the last game. I mean, he threw one interception in the game uh, in the last game they played him in. But he still played strong. Um, I definitely didn't have any doubt. I feel like that man is very hungry. Um, and, and he on a mission right now. And I think Jalen got a chance to be the the face of the league. I, love, I have loved seeing his evolution. Yeah, I, I, he got he got a real he he's already part face of the league, but he yeah. got a real chance if he pulled this off, um, get these guys to the Super Bowl, win the Super Bowl, it's gonna be hard not to make him the face. We of gonna the be league. saying fly eagle fly. That's it. <laughs> That's it. And and it's crazy, man, because you look at a guy like Jay, you look at his story, um, look at his pedigree. Um, you see how he's wired. You know he he don't get too excited. He don't get down. He's just stay right there. You know he you know, and I hate to keep going back to Nick Saban, but you know that's that Nick Saban mentality when you know your players don't get you know too high and too low. And he's been in in a, in a couple of programs that you know has been in situations where um, he had to be the face and he had to be the guy. He had to be yep. the one that you know take the blame. Um, you know, for whatever's going on, uh, win, lose, or draw. Um, and and he started as a freshman at the University of Alabama, probably one of the first freshmen to ever start um, as a quarterback at yeah. Alabama. So when you think about that, uh, it, that's I mean I mean he's a tough he's a tough young fella, man. I can remember telling this guy, uh, this this was the game when they pulled two out. I had already had told him, I said, man, you're going to win this game. It's game against Georgia. Okay. I said, man, yeah. you're going to win this game. I had told him way before I said, man, stay ready. You're going to win this game. And I was on the sideline. I told him that. And after the game, he came to me. He was like, you said it. But it's just, you know, when you when you talk about his pedigree, when you talk about him, though, like, he's never rattled. Like, no, he's never, never rattled at all. Like, never seen him. He's been consistent all year. He's been consistent since he got in the league. Um, he's grew a lot since he got in the league. Yeah. Um, it, it's just uh, just a breath of fresh air, man, you know, just watching him play and, and, and you know, seeing this whole story, man, um, and, and to the way that he's been a leader on the field and off the field. He does a lot of stuff in the community out there. He does, <clears throat> he does a lot of stuff where he's from. He does a lot of stuff back in Alabama. Um, uh, you, you see him all the time on social media and, you know, you, you see them going to visit families, you know, giving guys jerseys, giving, you know, community tickets. And, you know, he, he's just one of them type of guys that that's one of the, you know, the modest citizens of the NFL that you would really want, you know, your your rookie to look up to. Your, right. Your, your guys that's, you know, younger, you know, and even guys that's older, like, hey, you got some guys in the locker room that, you know, that's just out there for themselves that, you know, don't understand, like, hey, you got to put the team before. You know, I was watching this interview a little bit before I came here, and they were talking about, um, you know, how did he feel about, you know, Nick Saban pulling him from the game when uh, the first year when they played – was it Georgia? Yeah, when they, when they played, played Georgia, Georgia. Yeah, yeah they played Georgia the first year. <clears throat> and he just said it, man, you know, it will be selfish of me, you know, not to think about my teammates. Um, he went in uh, – Tua went in, he made a play <clears> – <throat> went in and, and, you know, won a game and he said, man, we national champions. And you see the celebration, you know, when Tua threw that last touchdown, you see the celebration that he had for his team, mm-hmm. like he had for Tua. He had for his, you know, as a Calvin Ridley he threw it to, or as a Judy. It was, it was one of them guys. Um, 
but he you see the celebration that he had for those guys and it was just like bro you you it's not even that you saved me it was just like man we did this mm -hmm. like this whole it year team <laughs> this this is a team yeah. and you were like man it would have been very selfish to me um and he understood he understand um especially at this day but he understood right then and there you know the process of you know the next man up and you know we got to do anything it takes to win this ball game yes sir and so you know just to see his leadership with that um and then the whole next year he never got rattled Mm -mm, you know, he, you know, he still he stayed at Alabama. Uh, they even put him at receiver some, you know, that next year, and he did what he had to do to put the team in the best situation. Um, so I, man, kudos to that man. Congratulations to him for what he's doing. He got a couple more um, games, mm -hmm. and I definitely think uh, Eagles gonna take it all. I can definitely see that. Yeah, I could, man, listen. The way those guys playing, man. Sheesh. That was a well oiled machine, well running engine, just hitting on all cylinders, man. Just Yeah, I, yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised, you know, if they if they took it all. Mm hmm You know, it's it's a lot of good football going on right now with these last four teams. Um, I don't feel like none of these teams is like a Cinderella story or or one of those teams that it's like, man, they just they barely got in there. Like, how? No, it was, like, it's just, oh, they keep winning by you know an extra point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, you know, I, I feel like all it's these several point margin. Yeah, all these like, wins. Well, except for Dallas and 49ers last night. Uh, that was only a uh, few point margin. Uh, but, you know. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> You brought it up. No, it, it, Sorry, I, I, didn't mean to, to to interject that one so early. Mm, mm, mm. I'm shaking my head over here, man. <laughs> I have high hopes. High hopes for Dallas, man. Just up and down. Mm, mm, I'm gonna get. Hold on, I'm gonna go back to Jaden first, maybe. Go man. ahead. Uh, I got. We gotta have a whole another segment off. Uh, what we seen last night with Dallas and San Fran. Oh my gosh, Lisa, you read my mind. Lisa just came in. She read my mind. She bought the tea. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. But, anyways, man, uh, yeah, I just. When you talk about Jalen. You, you don't. I mean, Jalen's showing you that he can manage a game, he can, he can make sure that he's, you know, doing whatever he can do to, you know, put the ball at the right places. Um, he's audible and uh, he's making the right reads. And at the same time, like, you just can't keep him in the pocket. If you keep him in the pocket, you, you can't just run him out the pocket either because he can throw on a dime. Mm -hmm. um, so it's hard to defend that, man. You know, it, it's very hard to defend that. He's throwing his receivers open. Uh, him and Devontae, they, they got a great relationship, and it's been like that since Bama Yep. Uh, for them two. Um, he's very strong. I mean, they was telling me that the guy was uh, squatting like 600 um, as a quarterback. Um but you, you you look at a guy like Jalen. I'm trying to pull up them stats from last night. Um, I think he had. I don't even know if he had 200 yards in 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 uh, passing. But they let you know like you don't need a 300, 400 yard game to win. Mm -mm. Like you you, you don't need it. Balanced on both sides. Through through two touchdowns, he had 154 yards uh, passing through two touchdowns, no interceptions. Um, <laughs> Man, look, we got sacked once. Uh, which, man, listen, that that guy's incredible. I, I can't give him enough flowers, man. What he did last night, man, it looked like he was like in his in his groove last night. Like he was hitting all cylinders. Um, Devontae making big plays. Um, Dallas making big plays. Um, all those guys looked like they was on point with each other the whole game. Yeah. Like the defense made, you know, some big plays too. Um held the guys to what, seven points? Held uh the Giants to seven points last night. Uh, I think so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, but you would think, you know, the Giants would do something. I mean, and, and, you know, let's go to the Giants too, because the Giants, you know, Saquon, I feel like Saquon did everything he can do. Um when it comes to uh being a running back in this league today. Uh and being down by that much um, early on in the game, 
I don't think Saquon could have done any more. Um, he had a uh, nine carries, sixty-one yards, and averaged six point eight yards a carry. It was one play, man. They threw it. I think it was a a, a, a bubble route to him um, out the backfield, and he ran like three or four dudes over, man. Just giving it his all, man. Right. Um, but when, when you talk about three times in a row. You know, you, you played this team three times this year, well, at least two times in the regular season, mm-hmm. one time in the playoffs. It looked like Philly kept getting stronger and stronger as they played them. Like, they like they didn't have to switch up too much. But the stuff that they did switch up, like, they got stronger and stronger. And it seemed like New York did not switch up anything. Like I, Just trying to keep with the same game plan. Yeah, or, it's like they had the same game plan, and they got the same results. Yeah, nothing. And yeah, it's starting to do that over and over, like, Come on, man. Put your guys in the best predicament to win this game. Mm-hmm. Like, And it wasn't a sloppy game as far as, you know, penalties or anything like that or, um, you know, referees being involved. Referees are letting these, letting these young men play. So, I don't know, man. You, 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 you 7 38 in the playoffs. Some got to give, man. Yep. Some got to give. Yeah, I mean – I don't know, man. I don't understand it, man. When you when you got a guy that's that, that a team that I played against three times in a row, man, you'll think that I'm gonna switch something up. You know, throw right a, now, a they wrench in my, there somehow. Yeah. To, you know, to... <laughs> <laughs> they got my number. <laughs> um let, let me try to figure something out. Let me, you know, let me do something. But, you know, New York had a great season this year, man. Um, you know, not talking down about those guys. Um I think they did all they could do up to that point. Um, you know, congrats on their season. I know um, Landon is over there, one of our, you know, Bama alums over there, man, playing safety, man. I think uh, he had a great season this year, too. So, um, listen, when we come back, man, I know we're going to talk about Dallas and San Francisco. Um, we got much more to wrap up. We got Kansas City to wrap up, too. Um, talking about the Warrior and Patrick Mahomes. Uh, but listen, man, we'll be right back with the ropes with TR3. As much as I have sat here and folk for that. I watched this morning, and you're so right. You know what I hear ringing in my head when you're saying about that kitchen three times? All I hear is Noah Turner telling Troy, you got to hit that one. One hit, Troy, that's all you got. One hit. Troy, let it go. Let it go, Troy. One hit. That's it. You have the most two hitches. That's too much. You got to you know, I've heard that a million times in practice, a million times. But that's all Noah would tell him. Say to Troy. And, I, and I'm sitting here, and I'm watching, and I'm watching th- th- these plays. You don't, you can't throw a five route. That was a five route. Right. You can't throw a five route that late till the to the outside when when, when when they're playing the sticks like they're playing the sticks. It was just some bad decisions made. Now- what was he? What was he? His legs all kicked up on that table like that. <sighs> Well, welcome back with the Rose with like, CR3. His Cowboys lost. You know, he, he he's not a Cowboys fan. He, That's why he's got. Yeah. Yeah, he, I don't want to say he hate the Cowboys, but. So, he being so he's just being sarcastic. Yeah, he, he did the he's whole pinky lounging, thing you know. this morning. Yeah, he did the whole pinky thing this morning. <laughs> <laughs> like, shut up. You say another <laughs> word. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he's sitting there with his feet up like that. And he got Look at him. <laughs> Look at him. Yeah, play some of that, Smitty. Yeah, Mike Irvin. <laughs> <Nothing. laughs> I got a sword for you. Pinky Pinky Pinky. 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 No, no, no. Next Friday. No, Next Friday. no, no, no. no. Hey, hey, hey. For y'all. What did you say, playback? La, 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 la. <laughs> he <is> nuts. <laughs> Me, right. Good to see you. Mm. Corny. Mm. That dog on Stephen A, man. Listen. But, all right, y'all. I, I don't know who watched the game last night. Watched some of it. But. I watched the game. And, man, it was just like the team that showed up last week. Wasn't there. Stayed last week. And 
Tampa. Or oh, they did they play in Dallas? Wherever they played that last week, <laughs> they still them. Like they did not. They still at the airport. Yeah, they did not bring them <laughs> to this week practice. Last week practice. The team, yeah, they did not bring them. Yeah, I, I'm lost, man, because I'm looking at Dax, man, and I'm pulling. I'm really pulling for Cowboys. Like I'm pulling it for them to make it out the first that that to that second round, man. Like, and I'm like, if they played like they played the week before or that Monday was it Monday? It was Monday. Yeah, but they played like they played Monday. Like, man, like y'all can really be unstoppable. The defense played great. Defense played real good. So they played with everything they had on Monday and then come, what, yesterday? They were just lackluster? Uh, I don't say lackluster. They were terrible on offense. It's just as bad. And he's um, being nice with that word. Well, not even on. Not, I'm, I, want, I want to say fully offense. Uh, the, the throwing game mm-hmm. was not there. I wouldn't say that – what a – Dax. Look at man. The quarterback wasn't there. Like, he – Say it. You said it. Yeah, like, he just wasn't there. And I hate to talk bad about people, like, but Dax, come on, man. He almost threw four. He, two, he threw two interceptions. He almost threw four. But that's not talking, talking bad. You're just giving your perspective of what you saw. But the it's, game. Uh, and you know they can do better. So it's not really talking bad. You're just saying you know they can do better. And then they got a field goal block. Had a field goal block. And then when you get a field goal block, you, you make the next I think you, I think they made the next field goal. But you know, now this is four field goals in a row. He's playing yeah, some now, audio. Yeah, now this is four field goals in a row. Um that that hmm. that's been missed with Dallas Cowboys. Like, I, I just don't understand it, man. Like, come on, man. I know there's a lot of people was pulling for them yesterday. You think they got too relaxed? I just think they brought the wrong game plan. Hey, Smitty, cut that audio, please. Um, And then, like, the last play of the game, it's been, like, two years in a row. Like, they, they do a stupid play for the last play of the game. What did they do? They had Ezekiel at center. Um... They threw it to the receiver, and he got hit immediately. So they couldn't even pitch it back and forth, do, like, the last play of the game. Hey, Smitty, cut that game feed. I have it cut. There's nothing running from this end. Oh, it's not like you're mixing and scratching. <laughs> <laughs> but when you, when, you, when you look at what Dallas did yesterday, right, and you look at what uh, San Francisco did. Mm-hmm. Now let's not let's not not count San Francisco because they they did their job they did what they supposed to be doing but I felt like the whole time like that game yesterday it wasn't even to a point to where they ran away with the game like it was still in the game it was a close game yeah it was I mean on the scoreboard it was like, a close game on yeah. the scoreboard yeah um and I feel like. All they do is make a touchdown and a field goal, and it would have been. But they got to come to play, though, man. Like, every time they converted, they, um, San Francisco converted, especially that last drive, um, well, at least the last uh, in the fourth quarter, mm-hmm. it was across the middle. It, it was They couldn't do nothing with, uh, with, with, with Kittle. They couldn't do nothing with the, with the slant routes. Like they could, they could do nothing across that middle, and so it was just like, bro, like they giving y'all the same thing every time. They giving y'all a, a skinny, a skinny slant, skinny post, or they giving y'all a seam route, and y'all can't do nothing with them line, with them, with them tight ends. They couldn't do nothing with that tight end. Like even that whole drive, that one drive, they call it the Kittle drive. I mean, he 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 made the the, the miraculous catch. Um, then you go back and you can't you, you you do a pass interference on them. Then it was like, like come on man, give me give me something. <laughs> it's like my my thing is man, y'all work too hard to get this far, especially Dex. Y'all work this hard to get this far, and you th- almost throw four interceptions, and it was like you weren't even throwing. It, it wasn't even like a okay, it's a tip ball. Mm-hmm. You was throwing it 
it straight to these guys. Now, was it on the numbers and it was just being dropped? I mean, was Man. it just was it a receiver problem as well? No. He was throwing it to a breaking cornerback, like coming down, running the route for the receiver. Mm-hmm. And you got your running back right out here on the, on, on the flare route, wide the hell open. Okay. And your cornerback is covering your receiver. And he's coming down, breaking on the ball, running the route for your receiver. And you're throwing it straight to this guy. That was the first one. It was just like, come on, Dex. All right, that's that's one mistake. Okay, cool. Then, the, then, then you almost throw another one right after that. That got saved. Mm-hmm. Then you throw one, and it was just, and, and it's just like, bro, come on, man. Just then, not thinking. Yeah, I, I don't know was he thinking or not. Uh, he just wasn't playing. I, I mean, he yeah. won the same Dex from last night. I mean, last from Monday, and it was just like Dex. Like, how did you go from cloud nine to? Zero mm-hmm. in seven, six days. Yes, they, six days. Yeah, they called it a hilariously bad final play in division. Oh game. yeah, I've never seen nothing like that. Yeah, that's yeah. like what everybody. <laughs> this is a weird play that stood out and not in a good way. It was a wild formation that didn't work out for them at all. Yeah, I never seen nothing like that. But it it wasn't like they was out the game though. They was in the game the whole time. Well, I mean, but that last play still the deal. Well, the play before that okay. was even worse. I mean, um, well, I don't want to say it was worse. He threw it, you know, he threw an out route. Um, dude caught it, and his second foot did not uh, touch and bounce. So he thought he was in bounds. I'm looking at the last one, the last play of the night. Yeah, he thought he was in bounds, and when he, you know, thought he was in bounds, he didn't bring that left foot, and so the I think it was the yeah. twenty, it was twenty, twenty yards or fifteen yards that he gained mm-hmm. was an incomplete pass because he only had one foot in bounds. Mm-hmm. Wow! Wow! So when he okay. went to catch the ball, his left foot, he picked his left foot up, and it was like it was almost on the ground, but he oh, picked okay, his left okay. foot up. Then he had his right foot on the ground. Then he took his uh, when he took his next step, his next foot was out of bounds. You want to play before the last play? Yeah. Okay, I gotta find that one. Yeah, his next foot was out of bounds, and so they counted. They didn't. They didn't count that as a completion because okay. you, know, you didn't have two feet in the NFL. Right. Not just one, like in college. Yeah. Okay. But man, uh, man, they. I don't know, man. I don't. I don't know what their off season gonna look like. Well, they lost they're, two. They're they right lost now. two coordinators. Oh, they already lost two coordinators? Yeah, I was reading something. They lost two coordinators. They got a salary cap to deal with. So they've got some issues to work through. So they're totally out then, of course. Yeah, the office coordinators For the done. season, yeah. Oh, you're talking about Dallas. Yeah, Dallas is mm-hmm. done. Oh, yeah. Season's done. Uh, Reggie, look, look Reggie's going to be on his sixth. I can't wait to hear what he said about this. <laughs> what do you think he's going to say? Man, I don't know, man. <laughs> Is he a Cowboys fan? No, he ain't no Cowboys fan. <laughs> Just checking. You know he he gonna ride with he gonna ride with Kansas City, um, but I don't know, man. When you get to the NFL, you almost really your the team you grew up liking, it almost just like go away. It fades. Yeah, I, you know, I was a I was a Dallas Cowboy fan growing on. I was a Tampa Bay fan, and I was a I Philly was too. fan. I was a Dallas fan. Yeah, I mean, you had to be when Emmitt was playing and Washington yeah. Redskins, and you had when Michael Irvin was playing. Um, Man, I had an old school Dallas jacket. Loved it. Yeah, everybody had that Dallas jacket. Yeah. Everybody had that eighty eight or twenty two. Um, and so being from Pensacola, um, you you had to because Emmett Smith, um, the same little leads and all this other stuff. Like you had to be <laughs> yeah. a Dallas fan. Um, but you know, and all the Florida guys really like the the the, the Michael Irvins and stuff like that. Uh, the Deion Sanders. Um, you know, you you had to. Love, you had to love Dallas, mm-hmm. um, and then there was the American team. Yep, America's team. Um, speaking of that, mm-hmm. when are we gonna get out of calling them the America's team? Well, I mean, you really haven't well, it's heard. embedded now. Like how? Yeah, I mean, because they've been saying it for for decades. But how are they an American team? They they're not. I'm just. Saying. I mean, I guess just getting people out of the habit of calling them that. That's gonna be a little. Oh, let's look it up. 
you know. Like they ain't been, they ain't won the Super Bowl since. <laughs> it's that I think they what ain't the, got out the second round. It's since been I mean, twenty since some odd years. Romo. Was it Tony Romo? Did Tony Romo make it out the second round? Mm-mm. I don't think so. I got a break. Oh, man, listen, we got to go to this break, man. We're going to finish this Dallas talk when we get back, man. All that frustration, man. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's <laughs> let it marinate, man, because you, you, you try to pull for these fellas, man. Frustration, my And name. as good as that defense played <laughs> yesterday, like, the defense going to do so much. But you you decide to to play like that in this game, in what? all games, this game. The rushing game was might trash. Have, they might have thought they had it. Man, ain't no thought like to it. You, you know, gotta, you gotta show up. You gotta show up. You get comfortable. You gotta that's perform. When you mess up. I'm nah, just you saying. gotta show up. You if, got to if show the up and show out. If that bad, obviously they thought they had it. I'm just saying. Man, you gotta show up and show out. I don't I, care what you well, say. I know that, but um, Zeke had they did. ten carries for 26 yards, average 2.6 yards a mm-hmm. carry. Um, Tony Pollard. Uh, had six carries for 22 yards, average 3.7. He got hurt. He broke his tibia um, yesterday. Um, Dax had four yards, 22, 22, uh, four carries, 22 yards. Um, Lamb, they kept two running for CD, six. Yeah, they kept running CD Lamb. He had two for six yesterday. Um, Dax threw for 20, uh, he threw 37 times. He completed mm-hmm. 23 of them for 206 yards. He had one touchdown and two interceptions. Man, come on, man. Listen, we're going we're gonna to talk about this when we come back, man. Listen, we'll be right back with the ropes with TR3. Welcome back with the ropes with TR3. Um, still talking about this this Cowboys game. I'm not going to get over this, y'all. I got an answer for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why they're coined America's team. Right. Here is the reason why. Nickname comes from the first uh, first coin in 78, Dallas Cowboys highlight film narrated by John Facenda, who mentioned that the team appears on TV so much that they are as recognizable as movie stars and U.S. presidents. Thus, they are America's team. That's why. Fun fact. <laughs> so, <laughs> not winning games or championships. Don't. Just the popularity. Just the popularity. So, I guess they can be replaced. So, who do you think is America's team? Uh, right now, in NFL, I wouldn't even. Nobody. I wouldn't no, even I, be named in. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. with that name, like, because first of all, you put a big target on your back, you know. Yep. When you get labeled that. Yeah, you you put a huge target on your back, and so when when you do that type of stuff, like, they suspect you to win every year. All the expectations so high. Well, I mean, the expectations are so high anyway, just because Cowboys, Jerry. I mean, Jerry Jones. Yeah. But it, it became that because they was named the American team, though. Mm-hmm. You know, because they, you know, they they was the show back in the day. Yeah. Um. I don't know, man. But looking at Dex last night, like I, it, it almost like he just forgot, like he was playing ball last night. Like he almost took a he almost <laughs> took a safety last night. What? Yeah, and and it was like the dude was coming down to hit him, and and the guy really let up because he wasn't trying to get a flag. But he was in the end zone, and he, you know, just gave him a push. He still had the ball in his hand, and so he, you know, the guy just let up for real, almost like in practice. Right. But if he would have just tackled him, it would have been a safety, and the game would have been over. Hmm. But it's just <laughs> like, come on, man. you just not thinking. <laughs> but how can you not think like that? It's almost like, that's almost like being in a car, right, and you just driving. you thinking about something. You don't even realize. You, you forget you're driving. Your subconscious takes over when you're driving because you don't realize you're driving. 
but playing this game when I got somebody that's 300 pounds running at me, <laughs> ain't no way in hell. <laughs> you let your subconscious. <laughs> yeah, like. My subconscious kicked in. No. Nah. I, <laughs> I got knocked out. Make it make sense. Ain't no way. It doesn't. Ain't no <laughs> way. <laughs> that analogy subconscious. Hey, man, we playing. What? <laughs> I wasn't here. <laughs> like, what is going on? Like. <laughs> Did he did he do a press conference after the game or no? Uh, I'm sure there's uh, probably some press conference audio. I didn't look for it. <laughs> I didn't look. <laughs> um. I mean, because you're so perplexed about what he said, you know, what, what was going through it, his it, mind. What can you say? I just figured you might want to hear what he had no, to say I after hear nothing. the game. You nothing. Know, look, you've sighed 147 <laughs> times in 30 minutes. So that's what Listen, I'm trying, trying to help you out here. <laughs> Listen, I don't hear nothing. We can't go no two hours. You sign every five. Minutes. It ain't nothing he can say <laughs> for that performance last night. To like he he really like I feel like he left his team out though. Left him out the drive man. to drive. Yeah. Like like your your offense start playing defense, literally because you were throwing interceptions. Like, come on, man. Uh, listen, we got to take another break. Reggie <laughs> be on this seat on, on this, for this next hour. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't wait to get his. Uh, First his hour comments. already down. You're going to do your last side before we go. <sighs> there you go. All right, get it out. Listen, man. <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> I was pulling for these guys. Mm. It's let over. you down. It's over. Yeah, they let me down. It's gone. I should have left. Stop talking about these guys when Emmett left. That's what I should have stopped doing. Like 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 Martin's tuna sandwich is gone. Mm. Let it go. Well, we'll be right back with the ropes with T R three. Walk on Sports Bistro puts everything they've got into bringing you game day with a taste of Louisiana. Dig into their mouth-watering, made-from-scratch Louisiana dishes or fan favorites like juicy burgers and fresh salads, all in front of 70-plus TVs with more than 40 beers on tap. Watching at home? Walk-Ons is available to go. Order online or through the Walk-Ons mobile app. Visit Walk-Ons in Tuscaloosa, Hoover, Montgomery, and Mobile. Walk-Ons. Wait, did Dak take your cinnamon toast crunch? <laughs> he, he did. Somebody else must did because, right, man, listen. <laughs> Man, let me bring in Reggie D. Raglan, <laughs> two-time national champ, Super Bowl, Super Bowl winner. We ain't talking about Dallas Cowboys. We talking about a Super Bowl winner. Reggie, how you doing, man? I'm so tired as I get up. <laughs> you sound like me. <laughs> uh, and I had me a time, old Cabo. We had you a time over in the Cabo, huh? Yeah, Cabo don't owe me nothing. I'm pretty more. I'm pretty, pretty. I'm pretty sure as much more excited than any type of Dallas football right now. So <laughs> please tell me about. <laughs> tell me about your weekend before we get into this Dallas talk with you. Nah, it was a fun weekend, man. Uh, went out there for a friend of my birthday, so you know, curved up a little bit, had a time. As that woman said, "Boy, we had a time last night." <laughs> 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 but, uh, but, but, but I had fun, though, you know. Got to see some whales, mm. you know. Drunk tequila. Mm. Yeah, so that you was the time. Casamigos. You know, I ate food. Mm. Huh? Yeah, some Casamigos. I was. No, we wouldn't drink. No, we was on that Casamigos here. We ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> that damn Casamigos. Mm -mm. I wear. <clears throat> so I don't think I'm allowed to. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to text y'all what we really call Casamigos. Uh -oh. uh oh. I got an idea. So, Reg, did you see any of the games this weekend, man? I tried. There wasn't no service out there in, in, in that place. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but I did get to see the first half of um, Dallas and Forty Niners, man. Oh and, man. Oh man. Couple of uh, a couple a couple a couple of plays, man. Could have, yeah, I could was on Dak too, man. But the receiver could have helped him out on that one when uh, when the receiver uh, when the DB ran his route for him and came back. He could have came back with the ball. That was lazy as hell. Also on his part, man. It's, 
man, you you in the playoffs trying to win a, a championship game, and you got you, you got to help each other out, man. Because like I said, I told I told a friend of mine this, man. The defense come through do that do what they're supposed to do. Yep. And all the off and all the offense got to do is just put up some type of points, man. That's yep. it. Just put up some type of points because the defense the defense did good. For me watching it, a little bit I was looking at man because Demarcus did real Lawrence good, he came man. to play. Demarcus Lawrence came to play. Yeah, so, he played a hell of a game. So man, it's, so what did I always tell you, man? Somebody got to just be average. They get <laughs> you just be average, man, over there in Dallas, boy. Y'all got a chance, <laughs> man. But man. that one of my good friends, man. So man, I hate that, I hate that for him, man. Everybody, everybody really chop him up now in the pieces. Listen, and, I, and listen, he I'm trying my hardest not to, to chop him <laughs> up, bro, but it's just like, even on that play we talking about, Red, you, you talking about, Zeke was wide the hell open, two yards from him, or, or five yards from him, and was nobody by Zeke. He was out there by himself in the flats and, and on, on, the, on the bubble route by yeah. himself. And that, rece- like and that cornerback ran that dog on route for that receiver, which the receiver was being lazy. But at the same time, it's like, bro, you got I'm a hey, check down touchdown. I've always been, you know, uh, Brett Favre made his living off that. You know, I've always been told, you know, check down touchdown. And some of these guys be looking for the big bang, you know, because they get behind or, you know, it's a big game to where they get to a like place to where, too much. yeah, they got to do too much. And then now you're losing your confidence because now you don't throw an interception or now you got to, you know, psych your head out to where. Man, I, you know, we good. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna. I'm gonna now you're talking too much in your head. Yeah. Now that, now that I didn't. I didn't play in every big game you could play in as far as like football, right? Yeah. So, except my high school state championship. And what they learned about that? Just playing the championship games. Just, just play ball. Like you ain't gotta try to do too much. What's the difference in that game? Yeah, it's a little bit more high stakes involved, but you still got people watching you. <laughs> What's the difference? So you like just go out there and play the game and don't try to do too much. And that's what people get messed up at. So you go out there and play the game, man. People still gonna watch you. <laughs> Come on, somebody who didn't play in every damn game. You can imagine. Savage. Um, Reggie, you trying to be nice. I know that's your, I know that's your guy. <laughs> um, I'm a fan of Dax. You know, I'm rooting for that young man. But brother, brother, don't, don't, don't do this one at this, not at this magnitude, man. Like you, you I but just then you come trend. back, you come back to Reggie. I gotta say this too, though, Trent. Go ahead. People don't. People who don't know the business side don't understand. They owe him for that meal. Mm-hmm. So he okay. don't play. Like he got a whole nother year. They owe him money. They're going to give him another chance. Even, even um, what's my guy down there uh, with, with the Cowboys? Who, uh, who the owner? Um, Jerry. Jerry. He even said, man, he took him to the shade on this one when he first played him. And a good friend of mine is a huge Dallas fan I was on the trip with. And he was pissed off. But he also understood the business side, too. They owe him, what, 45 mil next year. So that ain't going too far. No, no, I know he's not going nowhere. But my thing is, bro, while you there and you got the team that you got, like, I, Mike, if I had that team that he got, bro, if I had an offensive line that he had, bro, or just, you know, just that atmosphere. Like, man, listen, man, he got some guys that around him, you know, that can really ball. Like, you you ain't got no Rudy Pools, man. Even even watching Zeke yesterday, man, I feel like Zeke gave it his all with, you know, the little chance that he man. had yesterday. The problem was, I'll probably went out. Yeah, man, I was I was sad about that, man. Uh, he broke, I think he broke his tibia or something like that. But that's scary, man, because that's one of the hardest bones in your body. Um, that's that's that's, that's tough to break. Mm-hmm. And so uh, well, I mean, I'm I praying for that young a, man. I got, I got a school in mind. 
What you got? Oh, so when I hurt my ankle in, in high school. Oh, you said you got a screw I, in yours. Yeah, I had, to, I had to get screws put in my feet and tips. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know. That, that junk hurt. Yeah, I, I still got a tight rope in my ankle just to keep it together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, man, if you ever seen it yesterday, at the end of the game, when Dax, did you see when Dax almost took that second end zone? Ooh, I didn't get to see man, it. Man, bro. <laughs> Like like it, it almost looked like a a scrimmage, like a practice to where um, my guy came down and he went to hit Dax, but he let up on him because he didn't want to get a penalty. Like he just pushed him, and Dax Ooh. like he just stood there, and it was like he like he almost threw the ball, but he didn't throw the ball, and then he he seen the dude didn't tackle him, tackle him. Like he moved around a little bit, then finally like got the ball off, and he still almost doing the interception. It was just like, bro, come on, man! Like, what are you doing? You almost just took a sack. Like that, that, that was supposed to be the game right there. Wow. That's yeah, great. like a safety sack. Like, like this is something he like he rolled out and did too. Like he rolled out the pocket and went. 14 yards back and almost took a sack in the end zone. It was just like, bro. And it wasn't like they weren't blocking for him. He had plenty of time. And I think at this time of the game, it was just like, you know, we're going to scoot the fellas back. We're going to scoot the DBs back. <laughs> He's going to just send mm-hmm. the D-line. Yep. It was just like, Dax, what are you doing? It was, to me, I mean – Man, I started to say who, you know, who's who's running this game because he should have been tackled. Like he just like pushed him. You know how you do it, like 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 you know, you ain't supposed to hit your quarterback and you know, when you you scrimmaging. He was almost like that. But it's like if you scrimmage another team while we practicing, you know, you ain't gonna hit your quarterback, but you're gonna, you know, give him a little shove. Mm-hmm. And he was just like, Come on, man, what is going on? Like, I don't I don't know, man. Then he come back out and say something about uh that he promised next year. What he said, Lisa? <laughs> man, look, you got to stop making promises, man. Man, <laughs> listen. Listen, listen. Listen, this is what he said. He said, listen. if I had the answers, we would have won tonight, honestly. Too early, too soon. Prescott said, I promise. He said, I promise you we will, though. During my time playing with this team for this organization, we will. That wasn't the only promise he made. The question of interceptions prompted another question. He said, I promise the number. The number would never be this again, Prescott said, of this ridiculous interception total for the year. That's a promise. He said, I've got to be better. I don't know any other way to sugarcoat it. Mm. And there you have it. The way I feel about it, man, I, and, and, I'm, and I'm not the one to count people's pockets. The same way you got to play is the same way you got to keep playing, man. Yep. You got to just do like bike you. Yep. Right. Stop thinking so much, man. That'd be the problem with us as athletes. We we overthink everything, man, because we're just used to being so dominant. When things aren't going our way, we just uh, 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 be all over the place, man. So you got to stop thinking so much, man, and just go out there and perform, man. And stop giving a damn about what people got to say. Because people are going to talk about you regardless. Regardless. Yeah. Man, just go play. Don't, don't, don't. Don't think about what happened in the past, man. Them teams, the teams in the 90s and the 80s ain't got nothing to do with you. Everybody relives, it's just like Buffalo relives, with the, always think about the teams in the 90s. That's the problem. I get it. That was the 90s, man. We got to move forward. Mm-hmm. So I get it. People want to relive the old glory days. I get it. Man, but sometimes you got to take a hit and just be patient. I'm going to come, man, but like I said, Dak just got to go out there and just play, man. I'm yeah. worrying about messing up. Just go back to where you was in that sandbox, man, having fun. And he's at a he's at a perfect place right now. He can do that. Like, I just play. Mm-hmm. And I know it's a lot of pressure because of Dallas and they call y'all an American team. <laughs> but. Really? Yeah, because they got to get out of doing that, like. <laughs> It's not the American team. It's sarcastic way you just said. 
<laughs> we but need that audio from now. <laughs> man. <laughs> but they they gotta be able. He gotta be able to you know turn it on and turn it off. And yeah. For me, um, like you said, they're gonna talk about you regardless. Win, lose, draw. They they hate LeBron. They hated Kobe. They hated mm-hmm. MJ. Um, they 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 hate the greatness of the game. Uh, and so no matter what, like. I wouldn't give him nothing extra to talk about other than, man, he's just too good or, yeah. man, he doing his thing. Uh, but listen, we got to take a break, man. We'll be right back with the ropes with TR3. Cowboy was setting all the standards. They were setting the standards on the field. They were setting standards in new ideas and promotion. They are the Dallas Cowboys, America's team. Welcome back with the Rolls with TR3. Which one you want to get into for uh, two, Rich? Uh, your, your Buffalo Bills or your Kansas City Chiefs? Which one you want to knock out first? Well, for one, <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. So it's, it's one place I call home, man. Is is Kansas City, man? They treated me well. Buffalo, I don't know so much, man. I wish I, I wish I really could have got the chance to show them folks who I, who I was, man. But you know. Yeah, that's for a reason. So I don't give a damn. <laughs> <laughs> but man, like yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad that uh, Mr. Bengals and the uh, Chiefs still playing though. Because one of my closest friends in the league is DJ Reader. Probably their best defensive player on the Bengals, man. And, and I'm happy to see him get back in there and get the opportunity. But it's also good to see, you know, like Pat and Travis and all them back in there playing. Chris, too, man. I, I talked to Chris after the game yesterday, so, or Chris Jones, and uh, it was good to see them boys out there playing, man. So, it's always fun when, when your boys out there playing. So, and one thing about me, like, yeah, I love to be out there playing, but, man, as long, man, long as my friends get to shine, man, I'm happy. That's just like my best friend. Um, He was in uh, the new, uh, you heard the new show, BMF. Well, it ain't new, but. It's the second yeah. second season, right? Yeah, my best friend, yeah. uh, my my best friend, he played receiver for uh, the Tennessee Titans. Started with the Colts, and uh, this year he was with Cleveland. And right before I got there, uh, he left. <laughs> and um, but he's uh, he's he's gonna have a major role in the uh, in the series BMS. So man, I'm just always proud to see my uh, my people succeeding in in life, man. So I'm happy for him. Yeah, I seen you gave him a shout on Instagram. Yeah, yeah man, Chester Rogers, man, that been my dog since we was well, fourth grade, man, and man, I'm, I'm happy to see him. Um, he played in Medea, uh, Family Union. We was uh, growing up. He played in uh, uh, I can't think of the movie with Billy D. Williams. Um, I can't think of it, it but uh, it, it was his biopic, I believe it was. He played uh, Billy D. as a kid in there. So, but for the most part, man, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see my uh, my best friend doing his thing, man. Seeing him smile and provide for his family and in a different light besides just knowing as being an athlete. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That, 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 that lets you know athletes are just more than jocks. You know, that, that lets you know how smart we are, man. And for him to do that, man, while playing, like the, this past OTAs, he couldn't, he could like he, he said he had like 20 teams offering him. But he couldn't sign because he was filming. So, but uh, man, I'm so happy for him, man, and, and to see him uh, have the success that he's having. Man, that's what's up. <clears throat> Patrick Mahomes went 22 for 30, 195 yards, two touchdowns. Um, backup quarterback uh, Chad Hand. He Andy. went five for Hand. Oh, uh, went five for seven. <laughs> 23 yards, and he threw a touchdown, came in and did his thing. But uh, what you think about that warrior, man, that that that, that warrior with that name, Patrick, man, that, that guy, man. That, look, that that young fella, that man, he deserved everything he fit to get, you know, 
That's what it happened. Finna get. We already got it. Yeah, he already got. It. That's how I had to slow down. <laughs> but what's with to happen with this young man, future man? You know, beyond the game. Uh, just how much he is a warrior on the field. Um, letting them guys know that hey, I'm not. I'm not going out. Uh, and doing what he got to do to 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 check on his health. And you know, he went to the locker room. He came right back out. I don't even know if they gave him a full check. They 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 they, they probably most likely yeah. they did. But um, so no matter Reed, what, Reed. <laughs> yeah, Coach Reed told him, you can't go yeah. in until you go get checked. Right. But seeing that guy do that, man, um, just seeing how, you know, how much passion he had in his eye, you know, how much grit he had, you know, being on that field, um, how much he wanted it. Man, it just gives you chills just thinking about it, uh, you know, that, that warrior sensation that he got, man, that, that mindset. Uh, so when, when you think about Patrick, man, like you can't put it in one word, you know, or, or words that you know that 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 sums his his game mentality up, man. Like, like to see what he did Sunday, like it's unbelievable. But you know, we, it, it's definitely been done before. But at this day and age, man, a lot of guys are laid down. Most definitely, but that just lets you know, man. Look here. Look. The thought process is in the playoffs. Thug it out, you can rest in the off season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, like he'll he get all the treatment, everything he needs. But right now, man, if you can fight through it, you fight through it. Like, like this is what we always talked about, Trent. You know, it's the difference between being injured and being hurt. Yeah. Like, a lot of guys be hurt and acting like they injured. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, but that man was really hurt. He was hurt out there, but he – Will through. All it takes is a good tape job, man. And he got got one of the best best trainers in the NFL, and Rick Burkhardt. And I, man, Rick always kept me suited and booted when I was there. So, man, like he got a he got a, he got a great support staff around him, and, he, and the guys he got around him too. All you gotta do is just distribute the ball, and they gonna do their thing. So, well, but to see him do that though, man, it lets you know what type of person he is yeah not he, he just wasn't hurt he was injured too so you know when you talk about guys like patrick mahomes like and you can see you know what, what a fall off was with you know him not being able to put pressure on that back leg you know um, or him you know trying to stuff him in the pocket you know he he just take the one two then one 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 again uh with with the left foot and not with the right foot um he didn't have the power that he usually have and so he just adjusted like like to see that man, uh, it it was beautiful, man. Even for him to run the outside zone, because like people got to realize when you're underneath quarterback doing the outside zone, doing the stretch zone play to the outside, you got to run full speed to get the ball to the running back in 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 our lanes that we're running in. And so to see that young man do that, man, just to even you know come from underneath the center, because if I was them, I thought you know they were gonna have him um, in shotgun the whole time, so you won't have to take you know. Much pressure, you know, coming coming from underneath the huddle, and I mean, coming coming from underneath the center, and you know, having to bend down as much, and had to do all these different steps. Uh, but they put him in, you know, like he was, you know, full go, and he did his thing, man. So, um, like you said, man, when you talking about playoffs, it's do or die. Um, it's either you know, uh, you win or go home. I mean, I just like Kansas City game plan. Like they, they got so many. They distribute that ball out to so many different people. It's hard to stop them because you don't know who to look out for. You got to look out for everybody. Everybody that is a eligible receiver or a runner, you got to be on the edge of your feet, on the edge of your table, your toes every day in play. Am I right, Red? Oh yeah, you definitely right. You got to be on your toes. Oh, man, I know we got to take a quick break, man. Uh, listen, we're going to pay some bills real quick. Red your back. You know, we're going to let him kick back for a second. <laughs> I ain't going to put the bills on you just up. yet. I'm going to give you next segment, bills. I'm going to pay these bills. We'll be right back with the ropes <laughs> with TR3. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, y'all. We're gonna get caught up into it. Um, you know, um, you know, I've had a, a, a heck of a career, um, you know, up until this point. But you know, my motivation and my 
uh, mindset is focused on, you know, this team right now and, and how we can, you know, continue to win games, uh, continue to compete, um, and how I can put myself in a position to help this team win ball games because that's what it's about. So um, really don't get caught up in the, in, the, in the conversations that's been held outside of um, what I'm trying to do personally with this ball club. LeBron, is that something you... No, I mean, I have probably nine guys that's over 6'8", six, 6'9". Six, Oh yeah, old Brown Brown. Brown Brown on uh, oh, oh Uncle Shannon Sharp almost went. Went went Oh yeah, you ain't see it? I saw something about that. What's going on yeah, like on listen, the side? Shannon, Shannon, Shannon really throw them things now. What happened though? Man, they tried my dog, man. They were they had like they were gonna run up on Shannon. They had like they were gonna you know, to see what they made I, Shannon get out of they made Shannon it. get out of his seat. Um and he did apologize today, you know, from from his, you know, I guess the way he acted. Um, but we, I gotta go look and see what happened. But like he said, you know, they wasn't there to see him. You know, they, you know, he was there to be, you know, a guy in the stands, and you know, he shouldn't have caused all this, this and that. But I'm gonna tell you like this: you can't, you can't, you 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 ain't gonna sit up there and be disrespectful to that man too. too. And, and like I said, I, I see it on both hands. I see it on both hands, and I and I never, you know, uh, go on one hand and be like, hey, you know, he shouldn't have did this and that, or they should have did this and that. No, it was it was both sides to the party. Um, Shannon definitely, you know, he got out of character, and like he said, um, yes, I was Shannon Sharp, but it was me out of character, and you know, it, it is what it is, man. Um, but. He was bagging up LeBron. He told him that, you know, you don't want to see LeBron. Uh, was it Miles? Br- Who was it? Miles Garrett, I think. I'm reading it um, now. But he just told him that, you know, you don't want to see LeBron. You know, they just, you know, they just, then I guess he told him to F you. F you, F you, and all this other stuff. Uh, and so Shannon got up out of his seat. Told him, come over here and say that. Then everybody, you know, yeah. jumped in in it and you know made it a push com a, a, a push match between you know uh, security guards and you know whatever. Um, but I don't know, man. It's I, I feel like people be making stuff bigger than what it is. I don't feel like it, it really should have been all that. Um, but when you get the crowd involved into it, and of course LeBron gonna you know he gonna take up for his guy because that's that's unk. Um, and he's going to ride with him 365, 366 days on a leap year, like he said. Um, and he apologized to LeBron because, you know, at the end of the day, he shouldn't, you know, he felt like he shouldn't put LeBron in that situation, which I get. Uh, but when you when you, when you you cheering for family, you're going to cheer for family. Exactly. Now you gonna, you're going to cheer for family. Yep. You know, talking smack is just talking smack at the end of the day. But when you're cheering for family, man, it's, it's kind of hard to hold them emotions. But like he said, he let his emotions get the best of him. And he apologized like a man. Yeah, now, read the article on would other people apologize? I don't know. Probably not. Um, and that ain't even to the players. That's to the man that's on the other side of the desk with him. Would he apologize like he did? But I don't, you know, I don't want to go back and forth with that. But Reg, did you see what happened with uh, Shannon and LeBron? I mean, not Brian. Uh, Shannon and the Grizzlies. Uh, the Grizzlies. Yeah, man, they ain't want no smoke with Hulk, man. Man, listen. Oh, yeah, look at it. <laughs> like three then, people to hold him what, what, Then what's his name? I don't know. It don't even matter. You sit there and say he's just, uh, just a regular person. That's a Hall of Famer. Mm-hmm. And what he, he did, and what, and what he did as, as as a tight end. Like, he, 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 he trying to make it seem like he average because you and your feelings. Because he said, <laughs> y'all, like, yeah. y'all don't want to see LeBron. He's been doing a lot. Like, of get out your feelings, man. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. But it's crazy okay. because they be they they talk to Unk like he ain't like he ain't right. like he ain't Shannon like he ain't Shannon Short. And then they act like he's supposed to remain calm after all that. But I think what happens is you know when you, when you get into the media world you know you yeah. you become a reporter and so a lot a lot of athletes don't respect reporters because they haven't played it. But Shannon has played it. Shannon has been there and he's done it. He's a Hall of Famer. Yeah. Um, but I think. A lot of that stuff goes back to the man that's across that other side. Absolutely. Or the desk. Absolutely. And I don't really think that's, I don't think really people uh, 
uh, try to throw shots at Shannon. I just think the guy he worked with caused a lot of the mess. Did that make any sense, Rich? No, no. If I'm honest, I wouldn't even get it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't apologize. Hmm. <laughs> that's, just, that's just me personally. <laughs> uh, you, you, you talk to me crazy. <laughs> you said you gonna do something. You gonna, like, you gonna get crazy me. back? Let's see about it. Yeah, we we, we gonna see what's going on. Yeah, honest, I, don't, I don't think you shouldn't apologize, man. I match that same energy. Right. I wouldn't have done it. But like, it's understandable why. But. Shannon um, and John Morant's dad was talking. That's understandable. Them two grown men, they, they they respect each other. They respect what John's dad does, you know what I'm saying? Being a great parent, being at, at every game for his kid, you know, for his kid. And, um, like, society is weird, if you ask me, because, like, people think it's weird that a dad shows up to his son's game and, cheer, and cheers him on like he should, you know? Like, even like with Lavar uh Lavar Ball. Like they thought that was weird. Who cares, man? That's that's a proud parent. Them are proud parents, man. Chance for them kids, their kids. So how do you get mad at that or feel some type of way? Because your kid couldn't make it off the little league team? Hmm. Hmm. <sighs> Reg, you you almost struck a nerve with that one, Reg. They don't they don't want to hear that. Yeah, it's, it's, man, they got to hear it though, man. That's what you call good parenting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because you you think about this, right? People get mad when 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 your kids grow older and make it to you know to to the NBA or to the NFL or make it pro. Then they see family around and you know the the owners and the people that's around the building they don't want to see that. But you but you have a problem when you know people show up to the games, but when when but you say we slack when people don't show up to the little league games or practices. So the society is way bent over backwards when it comes to who, how we support, who we supposed to support, when we support them, um, how we build them up, and then you tear them down. Like I don't, I don't get that. Right. I never, I never got that at all. Yo, these are, these are weird, man. Contradiction. Like it would be a. It, like it would be a fool for me not to show up to my kids' games, it, and and suspect that just to show up to uh, the NBA stuff or the NFL mm-hmm. stuff. Like, and not one nah, this stuff been go- yeah, this stuff been going on for years. Like, I've been supporting right. my son. Like, I, I'm yeah. the one who drove my son to this practice. I'm the one who taught him this. I'm yeah. the one who. So you telling me not to be here now? You telling me not to support <laughs> and, and to support him? No, <laughs> you he <go> nerves. <laughs> No, I was on a roll. Not. Listen, I had a point. I was trying to get out. <laughs> you messed it up. <laughs> it, it was too good. I had you were preaching, my boy. You threw him <laughs> all the way off. I'm sorry. Oh, I ain't <laughs> sorry, but you were talking and talk. <laughs> oh, great! That was good. Good my nerve, man. <laughs> but you He's do make that was a that was a very good point. But when it all goes, just come down to. Uh, the direction of society is it's backwards and I don't think we'll ever be able to get it we talk about this stuff all the time we try to fix it growing up um, in society today especially in the household but I mean from what they what they tell us like we're not supposed to do this and do that when they get older um, and support our family or support our kids but all of a sudden, when they're younger, we're supposed to do this too. And, and, and But it's just like, bro, like, how do we not support our, our kids, our family, our loved ones? Like, how do we not support that? Can somebody tell you not to, I mean, somebody can't tell you what to do, but not to come to no. your ch- child's game. Well, when so they this is what happened. the pros, that, that makes no. So listen, this is what happened, right? Well, tell me um, what to do. When, when you get drafted or somebody's trying to, you know, look at you to go pro, like, folks go back and look at, like, middle school, um, elementary, you know, uh, you know, whatever type of, you know, they, they try to find the worst out of anything yeah. Yeah, with yeah. you. Like, yeah. they, they like they try. They like, look for the problem. Yeah, I told you, I got a referral one time, and it was like, they went back and talked to, I think, my first a kindergarten teacher about it. It was just like, what? 
No, they do it for everybody. I was just listening to, well, they do it for most. I was just they do <laughs> they do it for uh, for most folks. I know I was just listening to the guy that played with the San Antonio Spurs, and he was talking about you know he was in a group home and all this other stuff. They went back and you know they was talking to all these guys about you know how he grew up and all this other stuff and you know people that were just associated with him. Like it was just crazy. Man, I can remember my high school coach got into it my GM at, at in, in in Indianapolis because he was trying to get on to him or say something to him about something as as me as a grown man about something that happened when I was younger. So my high school coach said, man, bro, listen, I'm going to tell you like this. You don't pay my bills. I ain't got no association with you. Y'all got my, y'all got my, y'all got my son. He called me son. Y'all got it my son here. Sense. They go way back but, to elementary Yeah, he had to sit there and tell him like, bro, why are He's you the talking same to person. me? Yeah, he had to say, bro, why are you talking about me? And I had to tell the coach one time um, and I was in Cleveland, and somebody had called my brother. We had just had a whole coaching staff. Somebody called my brother. And then when I was talking to the coach, and he said, man, yeah, your brother, I don't like him. I said, you don't like what? He said, yeah, I called him. So I said, man, listen, bro, don't you ever call my brother. Right. Period. Keep my family out of anything I got going on up here. I keep them up out of here. Right. Then the next day he came and apologized to me. But it was just like, bro, like, listen, man, I'm here to do a job. I'm here, I'm here to do my service as a football player. You know, and, and, and that stuff of running you away from the game. Like, because at the time, it was just like, man, come on, bro. Like, what? why are y'all going digging in my family life? That's the part I'm trying to wrap my head around. It's a big mistake. Big. Yeah, listen. They are the FBI, CIA, uh, uh, everything that you, they detect us. Private investigators, they all that. Man, when people putting a million dollars behind you, they gonna make sure they know anything and everything about you. Mm -hmm. I'm lying, Rich. No, they ain't lying. You ain't. You wonder why they. You hear crazy stories of guys, man. Um, being at the combine and they come back and say, "Man, just just them asking me this question." Cause shoot, somebody didn't say and then leaked and said something about you now. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. But like you said, when they when they putting millions into you, man, yeah, I'm gonna do the same thing. I understand that, but going back to elementary school, that's that's a bit much. Yeah. I can see that's like your, your antics or whatever. Starts, I mean, I can see your antics in college or something like that. But elementary school, you you gonna change eighteen different times when you growing up? Like seriously. Well, that's how it is, though. Yeah, they 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 not giving out seventy five dollars an hour. Hmm. They giving out yeah, fifty thousand a week or better. I get that. Well, like I said, depending who you is, you might be getting nine hundred and, and some dollars every two weeks or a week. Depends how the, how they do the payroll of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you feel me? So shoot, yeah. and you mad how the folks they do how they see fit. Just yeah, like they, they gonna let you know if they leave. Is, is yeah, crazy. Money. Yeah, like they gonna let you know at the end of the day is they leave. The ultimate control. And I'll leave it right there. And I ain't trying to have none of that. You either, either play by our rules or you get on. Ultimate control. So you choose. Hmm. Now because out of ten, you gonna play by them rules. Cause you didn't tell me you ain't never had. Hmm. Speaking of rules, man, um, what you thought about the uh, the Bills and, and the Jaguars game, man? I know, um, to me, the the biggest thing of the game, um, that my no, boy Demarin was there, man. Yeah, yeah, that's your boy Demarin was there, bro. That was that was my biggest uh, smile of the game for real. Uh, to see him, you know, show up to the game, you know. Um, get the crowd pumping. And I think both teams felt the energy, um, you know, just to have them in a building, man. I think that was a special moment uh, for the NFL, uh, for any athlete uh, in the world, you know, to see a, see a, a young man really, you know, let's let's keep it real, you know, pass away on the field, playing something that he learned to do as a kid and, and loving to do, uh, to see him come back and he's walking and, Oh, he's visiting in the locker room. He's watching the full game. Uh, what two weeks, two or three weeks later, 
Um, that's big, man. Uh, just to see him out there, uh, see him in the public eye. I'm you know, happy for that young man. And I know Reggie, you have you know been keeping a lot of contact with him. Um, you know, just seeing that you know that emotional moment, you know, for you know the world for me um, was huge. Oh yeah, man. Um, not uh, been talking to him, you know, but I also keep my space and you know let him hear everything. But man. Another great turn, Lamar. <laughs> Lamar back outside. <laughs> <laughs> he's good, man. His spirits is good, man, and he's getting better uh, every day, every week so far, man. And he's getting back to a normal life, man. And, um, actually, life would never be normal again for him, but you know, but uh, it's, it's still gonna be normal. But for him, just to be in, interacting with everybody and be, seeing him driving and everything like that, man, it's it's um. I know, I know. God is real, man, and and he, and he can make anything right, man. Preach, preach. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting. I was counting down like three, two, one. There you go. <laughs> man, but you know, I know you uh, pay attention to Buffalo because you know you played there. Um, but just looking at uh. You know the game, and I just felt like they they wasn't like I don't know if like it was a start like they didn't start off like the the usual Buffalo Bills like the like the like the digs you know he 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 did they didn't get on the ball oh uh, you know was he able to get on the ball you know um, but on the other side you know Cincinnati got you know uh, chased the ball they they got their receivers ball they spread the ball out uh, and they ran the ball pretty good too um, so. You know, when you're looking at the game or you're looking at some of the stats or some of the highlights and watching how, you know, strong that Joe Barrows, you know, uh, he started out, man, you know, what did you think about that? Uh, man, it was uh, good to see Joe get out there and play the game. But, like, you could tell someone's off about Buffalo the way they played even last week. Mm-hmm. Um, going, up, going up against the third string backup, man. And, like, you could tell they, they wouldn't they themselves then. And and the only thing the Bengals had to do was really stop the run. You stop the run. And you, and Buffalo really can't get into their game how they want to because th- their offense is based off how Singletary goes, and he's running the ball and James Cook. So if you can stop the run, man, and play play good defense in the back end, man, you got a shot. Hmm. Hmm. Yep. Well, I guess they say like this, man. Everybody ain't able, man. So. Oh, no. Everybody ain't. Oh, cool. Everybody ain't able. Everybody ain't able. Everybody ain't able. Or it must be nice. Must be nice. Speaking of being nice, Alabama's ranked in number two right now. Uh-oh. Behind Purdue. Yeah. I don't see how. Okay. Um, They keep putting us behind these teams. We done knocked off number one team. Twice already, um, and still being on the road, um, and we are seven and zero in the SEC, um, and we not just winning by a little margin points. We we whooping it. We 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 getting into these teams now. We we doing our thing, man. And so that I know that young man Brandon Miller, man. He down there. He he's some serious, man. Uh, I believe in him. Uh, I'm very happy for this team. Uh, I think they still, you know, they they're not giving our respect just yet, um, but they need to. I mean, we just beat Missouri eighty-five to sixty-four. Um, come on, man, give us our respect, man. We're a basketball school too, man. So y'all, y'all stop playing with our top, man. What do you think about that, Red? Yeah, like they're trying not to. Yeah, they playing well, with our top. I I I, I, I want to say they're doing that because they want us to keep proving and showing but we didn't prove and show but like you know greatness is sustained over a long period of time and I get it we are just now getting back to what we used to be in the early 2000s mm. you know so like I get it so you gotta man, like, you gotta earn you gotta earn the respect and we earn the respect but at this point she, we gotta go take it yeah which when you're right them guys putting up points, man. They got another game, what, Wednesday. Um, who we play Wednesday? 
Yeah, we got another game Wednesday. And Mississippi State. Mississippi State. Um, I ain't gonna say it should be a win. Uh, it should be a good game. Um, and I think we already uh, beat them once this year. Um, Mississippi State has always kept a solid team. I don't know them guys from Mississippi, man. Are some of the strongest guys I know. Basketball. Basketball. Well, everything. All everything. Around. Like okay. I can remember playing against Mississippi State, and it was my last year in school, and I cussed everyone I lined out in the um, in the locker room. I got a DJ Fluka face, Chance on Mac face. I went off on everybody. I said, bro, I don't know how y'all not t- hitting them. It felt like it's 22 people in the backfield with me, hitting me every play. <laughs> and we won. We won by a big margin, but it was just wasn't our game that we was usually playing. Like, it was literally manhandling. They gave y'all run for your money. Man. And, that, and, and, like, Mississippi State was, like, that one team. I think any team from Mississippi, like, was them teams, like, you just didn't want to play. Like, <laughs> oh, it's going oh, to be a dog go. fight. We're going to win. Man. But it's going to be. Right. Like, you gonna uh, you gonna earn it. <laughs> man, you had to go to Mississippi State to play because of them that daggum bell. Man, yeah. Because of the what? Them bell had them, them cowbells. Oh. And they be ringing them oh, cowbells yeah, the whole the time. time. That's annoying. And then shoot, they they fans are cruel. Them fans down there in Mississippi. Just, let's just say they're some Mississippi fans. Alabama, is Alabama. No, 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 no. We got some of the nicest fans ever. Oh. They're I'm like the, um, they, the they Raiders are, fans. No, they old school Mississippi <laughs> type fans in Mississippi. I'm just saying they talk like that about the Raiders too. Raiders fans, like they crazy. No, they ain't got nothing on Mississippi State fans. Mm. Like, they had somebody okay. outside my room. Yeah, they had to, man, they had to call, man, they had to get the folks on this, man. They was outside my room trying to wake me up. Yeah, they was crazy, man. Mississippi State. How the hell did that happen? Bro, you know Wait, Mississippi wait, ain't what? got the, the best hotels in the world either. So, um, somebody got in. Yeah, it was Dana like a motel oh, <laughs> Wake you up to do, like, we're trying to Man. spray up with you or something? Tell Trent to bring his bleep, bleep, bleep out here. We going to bleep, 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 and bleep, and bleep, bleep, and bleep, 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 bleep. <laughs> what? Language. And bleep, and bleep, bleep him. And bleep, and bleep. And it was, man, it was gone. That's crazy. How did he even get up there? Man. Did somebody probably let him up there that worked know. at the hotel? And it was crazy. Like, y'all go ahead and get him. It's hard to get on them floors. It's hard, man. Listen, it was hard to go to the next room. Yeah, it was hard to go to the next room when 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 it was curfew time. Yeah, you couldn't go to the next room to go chill with your teammate. So I don't know how he got up there. But Inside they had to remove job, him. sir. Man, listen. <laughs> somebody let him in. Hey. I, did y'all see this guy win a seventy two thousand on the on his parlay? Yeah, I seen that. We we spent what five dollars? Man, that was crazy. <laughs> yeah. And he got off Dallas. <laughs> right. He That's got lit though. Dallas. Yeah, yeah, man. It's <laughs> I'm gonna stop playing. Man, listen. Man, dude. I see I know I get addicted to it. I ain't even start playing no parlay because I don't even know how to do the bets. Like I don't it's too much going on. Like, I'm a straight up bet. If you ain't gonna bet me straight up, I don't want to <laughs> bet you. <laughs> I ain't for the bet this person score the first point. This person, uh, think about percentages and stuff too. Yeah, like, yeah, who get the coin, yeah. to, uh, who get the coin toss? And, man, listen, it's listen, they break all the how, how many numbers it's like you in calculus. <laughs> how many numbers they be having on them little tickets? Like, like, bro, like, I know somebody that doesn't it win very well, he's been doing it for years. Well, always win. One of my co-work, old co-workers in Florida. You know somebody knows something about everything. I know. So you give me that number when we get done. I will. <laughs> I will. <laughs> they, used to, they used to call me that. Like, they said I was a dictionary because I knew I always knew somebody knew somebody, and I backed it up, and I would literally call them. I had somebody go, I need to find somebody I can go fishing on a yacht with, and I called somebody and, like, here. <laughs> Man, look, we got to wrap it up, man. I, I want to thank you to up. everyone yeah. and for joining me, my co host, Reggie Ragland. We had Miss Lisa over here, Chris over here. And, man, listen, y'all can find us on all social media platforms Facebook, um, Twitter, Bama Insider, uh, Instagram, YouTube, Spotify if you missed the show. That's The Ropes with TDR3. Tune in tomorrow for the hometown heroes for the second half. And, listen, at the end of the day, you are your way out. Good night.